Okay, now it turns out we're not the only species that assemble, assembles ourselves into networks and gives rise to other sorts of special properties. And so to push this point home, this point about emergence, this idea that collectivities can have properties that are not present in the individuals themselves, let's consider a further example. This is a slime mold. It's a primitive amoeboid fungus. Um, and all this fungus does is digest wood. So this thing lives on the forest floor, and if you've ever lifted up like a pile of leaves in the fall, and they're wet and soggy, and you see those little white tubes under, that's what this thing is doing. The little fungus forms connections to other nearby funguses, they fuse, and they make these long tubes, and they digest wood, and they distribute the waste from their digestion through these tubes. Um, but it turns out individuals of this species, in connecting to each other, form a kind of superorganism uh, with unexpected properties. For example, they can solve mazes. So if you take a maze and you put it on a kind of agar plate and you put food at two different spots, the entrance and the exit to the maze, and by food here I mean like something like wood or like an oat flake, if you put oat flakes at the entrance or the exit of the maze, this simple organism will change its shape and connect the two sources of food by finding the minimum path length solution between the two points. If parts of the organism are spread out on the gel, they will reassemble to form a kind of single superorganism. And so they evince a kind of maze-solving property, a kind of primitive intelligence that's not present in the individual organisms themselves. And this work was done by a Japanese mycologist by the name of Toshi Nakagaki. It's the fungi working collectively that give rise to this, this property, this maze-solving ability that emerges from their interactions. In fact, you can use this uh, kind of uh, maze-solving ability, or this ability to find the optimal paths, uh, to, uh, to do other sorts of things. Like here, we show an image. On the left is the uh, rail network designed by human beings in England. Uh, and on the right is some work done by my colleague Mark Fricker uh, at Oxford University. He took the map of England and he put little oat flakes at every city, and he plated the amoeboid fungus. And the amoeboid fungus gave rise to a path connecting, or a set of paths connecting the, the oat flakes that actually imitated and in many ways was better than the rail wet network the human beings had designed over 200 years. So if you look at these two things side by side, you see that the fungus is able to design a railway system for England, in fact, a better system than the one that they have.